Hello, everyone. I welcome you to the Soul Sisters and Brothers Apostolate. I am Agatha Wokocha, greeting you from Uppsala City of Sweden. Today on the program, we want to look at the topic, Parents' Wounds. And we know parenthood is a divine gift and also a divine call. Parents are not perfect and, uh, and they have their own challenges and they also have their own wounds. But some of the questions we want Sister to resolve in her teaching today is, can there be a transfer or reflection of parents' wounds, pain, onto their children? And how can this be resolved? We have with us Reverend Sister Dr. Ngozi Okpala Ewe. Sister is a member of the Missionary Sisters of the Holy Rosary, presently on mission in Nairobi, Kenya, where she lectures at the Psycho Spiritual Institute, Maris International University, where she's also the Dean of Students. Sister lectures at Tangaza University and also teaches young candidates from various, in fact, different um, uh, congregations. She teaches them psychology at the Mercy Center, also in Nairobi, Kenya. Sister, we welcome you. Thank you for finding time to be with us and Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Wow, sister, no doubt. You see this, your nice idea, right? Keep it for me. Or I'm coming to take my own. I will increase the size. <laughs> sister, kindly lead us in the brief opening prayer. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, our Father, we come this morning to thank and praise you for coming into the world to redeem us. The birth of Christ is a gift to us, and we thank the Lord for that. As we deliberate on the issue of parent wounds, which I believe will be a source of knowledge and lesson for us today, we ask the Lord to bless this day as we say, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, seat of wisdom, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I will take the anchor scriptures, which is from Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast, Zion for whom no one cares. The word of the Lord, thanks be, thanks to, be God. to God. So, sister, over to you. Thank you very much. Today, I am very glad to share with you what is the meaning of the parent's wound. Everybody wants to be nurtured and loved by their parents, especially the mother. Many children cling to their mother to receive care, love, emotional care, psychological care, spiritual care. And this is the need of every child in order to grow up and become the really fully functioning person. So the wound comes in when some parents are not there when the children are growing up. They hand over their children to the caregivers. The truth we need to know today that the love of the mother and the one of the caregivers are never the same and can never be the same. The child stayed in the womb of the mother. He knows the pain of the mother. He knows everything about the mother. And then when that child is born, he expected that mother to continue to show that love. And when the mother is not there, it can be very, very difficult. Sometimes the children are left for days. They don't see their parents. And when they come back, the parents are so busy that they don't pay attention 
they may have provided all the material needs but that psychological need and the emotional need is even more important than material needs but many times parents don't see that side i remember one child who wanted to commit suicide because she came each time she she comes back from school she wants to share with the mother what the teacher said what this person said what the, the mother said go and sit down i am busy go and eat your food and then go and read your book go and sleep you know but he wanted that connection with the mother the mother to share his joy his sorrow but the mother is not available instead he sees the child as a problem child you are always demanding for attention you just want me to pay attention to what kind of a child i what why can't you see how other children will behave you will push the child away and this child has nobody else to tell this story. Even if you want somebody else, telling it to the mother means a lot, or to the parents. Some parents have no time to play with their children. So they see playing as a waste of time. They just tell them, go and read your book. It's all about book, about doing this and add that. But play helps to form the brain of the children. So many children feel, you know, feel bad when their parents push them away because they made them feel that they are they are the problem while actually they are asking for what they deserve to grow up as a fully functioning person parents didn't don't understand this and children don't understand so they keep growing in the dark and that's what i want to bring up today that no matter how busy we are the children need psychological presence emotional presence physical presence spiritual presence to really live a good life and this helps to develop the brain of the children so mother's wound comes in when the mother for example is not well he's sick he's not able to attend to the emotions of these children of course, the children will be feeling sorry for the mother. They don't want to disturb. But their own need is being neglected. Then there are some mothers who have so much work to do out there. They are so busy, you know, getting money for the family, which is good. But then in the Bible, they say there is time for everything. You have to create time for work. Great time for these children. Great time for your husband and for your wife. We all need each other and we need time. So when parents become so busy that they don't even care about the feelings of their children, the children might try to, you know, adapt and follow, but psychologically is affecting them. And what you give to your child is what you give to his own child when the time comes. I have had a man who had no feelings. He doesn't understand what feelings means or what it is all about. Because when he was growing up, his father was never in the house. He comes late at night, leaves very early in the morning. So he never knew who the father is or how the father will feel and all that. The father has no time. So he grew up that way, he has no time. Even to get married was a big problem because he doesn't know how to love a woman. So it becomes a big issue for this person until he becomes psychologically disturbed and he came for help. And it's not easy to help such people. It is easier to help somebody with a physical wound than to help somebody with psychological wound or mental health wound or emotional wound. Those ones are very, very difficult to handle. And that's why even in counseling, you, it, it takes time. Another uh, parents that can create wound for their children is the one who always do everything he feels that it is humanly possible. He pay the school fees, take the driver, take the child to the school and back, and all that. he never allowed this child to do 
anything on his or her own. So this child now becomes so dependent materially on the mother, but emotionally and psychologically where he's supposed to be allowed to be free is not free. Imagine somebody at the at that five year old asking the mother, "Do uh, uh, this 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 girl is it good for me? You know, is this girl good for me? How will your mother know? But because he has no mind of his own, if he that the mother has the answer all the time, this is a wound that this child, if he's not helped, will carry all his life." Believing that everything has to be instruction from the mother. These are the, the mother who undermothered their children. They undermothered their children. They didn't help them to develop self-esteem and to grow. And these children, they don't have a mind of their own. They can, it is difficult to be depending, independent. And we have so many of the young people who are like that, who can't marry. And when they marry, every time they are calling their mother to come and solve problems, which they would have solved if they were helped, truly. And there are some mothers who are emotionally absent and unreliable because of their own experiences. They don't care. Truly, actually, they don't know how to care. Because they are not cared for. So they are all the time seeking that emotion to be fulfilled by the children instead of the other way around. You know, when any small thing happens, he begin to cry. The children are already around. Mommy is okay, you know, petting her. You know, so how can such a person take care of the children? Become difficult because it's the children as the people who should be, especially if their husband is not always there. You see some woman saying, hey, my children love me so much. They do A, B, C, D, forgetting the father. And the children need father and mother always. The love of the mother for children is not enough. They need the love of the father and love of the But Often women who are always attached to their children emotionally, always feel that, you know, we don't need a father. It's only me and me alone. And it's a problem. Because it creates wounds in the heart of those children who he has forced to believe that it was their duty to handle her emotional issues. And it is also lack of maturity on the side of the mother. Because it is the mother who should help the children to grow. Then when the children have grown and have learned, maybe in your old age, then they will come back to take care of you. That's how nature made it. But now you see so many things. My son, my son. I say, it's not your son. It's our son. It's both the father and the mother who own the son or the daughter. But you see some women, and they will be claiming right that the father is not always there. If the father is not always there, it is your duty to talk with your husband or with your wife to see how you, the two of you can complement. Because the children need the two of you. So if you cast your mind to your childhood and you remember how you felt growing up, for example, if you are undermothered, you will be unable or scared to turn to your mother in times of your need. If you are undermothered, you are not sure what you will do to make your mother happy or unhappy. So you're all the time struggling. And you don't want to make him or her angry, you know? So you're always, you, you have to be a good boy or a good girl all the time so that your mother will be happy. What of your own happiness? Nobody is interested in that. If you are under mother, you will be very scared to take your mother's time. When you say, no, I'm busy, go away, go away, go away. You start feeling sorry. Instead of feeling, but mom, I need my time now. But now you, it, 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 it is the other way around. And you begin to wonder whether my mother really loved me or not. Is it me just loving my mother or my mother loving me? You become nervous, anxious, 
and you know all those sicknesses will begin to show itself without knowing where they are coming from and you will feel that it is your duty to care for your mother and not the other way around so you, be, you begin to have these drivers or scripts where when you become adult you are still feeling that oh it's my duty it's my job to make everybody around me happy you know not about you because jesus said love others as you love yourself so the love begins with self but many a times people with this wound don't believe that they have right to love themselves or even people to love them they always feel that it is their job it's my duty to love everybody and some people call it selfless for me it is a psychological disorder it's not selfless so and um if you continue in this way you will notice that most often you will be suffering from depression anxiety poor self-esteem anger issues any small thing you flare up and you don't know where they are coming and you begin to use destructive criticism on yourself security becomes an issue and you'll be struggling with love if somebody comes to love you you don't know how to behave you don't know what to do you know you're wondering hey some people find it difficult to get into a secure relationship even when a genuine person is coming they'll be looking at the person with the eyes of the mother or the father and it becomes difficult so what do we do because our time is not there what do we do to help this kind of situation first of all you have to admit that you were hurt by your mother physically emotionally psychologically then you learn how to allow your inner child to vent the feelings that they have stored for a very long time inside you those feelings will never go away until we talk about them and talking about them the way it comes is very healthy at this stage you're not looking to whom to please you are looking at your reality and this will create a space for you to just look at the mess that you have been in and accept because we have to accept who we are before the change comes so transformation takes place only when we are able to voice out speak what is in our heart how it feels for us and you have a good listening ear who will not judge you or condemn you or tell you no you're speaking evil about your mother don't say that because if you still put your mother in the picture you cannot be yourself and you need to be yourself for you to be healed i had somebody who he took her time by the time he gathered energy he not only uh, talked to herself he created time and went and talked to the mother the mother at this age and this age this is what you did and this has been hurting me up until now and after they have talked and talked and the mother explained that he was ignorant didn't know what was happening and all that they reconciled and for me it was the best reconciliation so working on your wound does not mean that you hate the person who maltreated you but it's giving you the freedom to stand for yourself for the first time to say this happened to me i don't like it and i don't want it to to, to continue so you will discover that the more you reflect on that and accept yourself the more all those pains and anger and feelings will begin to go away they will disappear from you and then you take time to be with yourself self-talk is one of the most important way to talk yourself out of your wounds out of your problem you allow yourself the different personalities in you to speak how they feel and accept them and then from there 
you begin now to see yourself in a more positive way that you are not the problem of your mother. Your mother has her own problem, which she made you believe that you are the one. But you are not. You begin to say that to, you, to, your, to, to, to yourself. And you also tell yourself that, yes, I have the right to demand for this. So it wasn't a crime to have demanded for it, but my mother did not understand. And he felt that I was the trouble. I wasn't the trouble. After you have unsaid all these things, you will see yourself smiling like a newborn child. And with the help of the counselor, you will be able to see that all that you're carrying is not worth carrying. You know? Emotional neglect has many, many forms. Maybe you, your parents have a very high expectation of you and you cannot meet it. They are blaming you. And yet, you cannot. Just like the story in the Bible, God gave talents to different people. Some he gave ten. Some he gave five. Some he gave two. Some he gave one according to their capabilities. But most parents will want the child to always be first, whether he can make it or not. And you see yourself really struggling to be that. To be the best be. Don't make a mistake. Life without mistake is not life. We must make mistake, and that's how we grow. By making mistake, we learn from the mistake and we grow. But when parents insist that you should not make mistake, and when you make mistake, you are punished as if you are the worst sinner on earth. It makes it difficult for that person to grow. So these are for perfectionist parents, you know, who believe that their children must continue to do more, you know, you never stop. You have to be going higher and higher. And they may complain, you know, that this child, you know, supposed to be like this, when he's like this, what is happening? Instead of learning to understand the child, this is what's caused wound in children. And often it's not a wound that you can share to people for them to understand. Often, they, 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 but, your, but your mother loves you now. They see it as love. But inside the person is dying. And nobody can hear that thing. So the signs that you will have, you know that you are being neglected by your, your parents, are feeling like there is something missing in your life. There is something missing, but you're not sure of what it is. There is emptiness inside you. There's a hollow inside you. Every small thing you get discouraged or you get overwhelmed. You have a low self-esteem. You, you feel that every friend, even when they are showing love, rejects you. All the effort to make to love you becomes important because in your mind, you have just said that to yourself. This is emotional trauma that you are really going through. So looking at all this, it gives a better understanding that we all, in one way or the other, need true affection from our parents. No matter how busy the parents is, he needs to learn to take care of the children. And this can create a generational wound. Because if you are undermothered, if you are undermothered or underfathered, you also do the same to your children and your children, children. And it is it goes on in that way. So to come out of it is a real process. You as a person may not do it on your own alone. You need help, a psychologist, a counselor to help you journey where nobody will judge you. Nobody will condemn you. So, thank you very much. This topic is a huge topic, but we'll stop here today. And then, if you have questions, we can entertain that. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much, sister. As if you were reading my mind. It's very, very deep. But this is like a tip of the iceberg. But it's worth listening. It's worth listening. Thank you very much, sister.
you said uh, we should, you know, life without mistakes is not really, really life. Well, what kind of mistakes are, are there deliberate mistakes? Are there mistakes we can tolerate? You know, I don't want to, so that I deliberately now go to stop myself and do things. Where do you, what is a mistake? The mistake, what kind are you referring to here? And are there you, deliberate mistakes? You see, as human beings, we must make mistakes, whether knowingly or unknowingly. Say, for example, a child wanted to eat the uh, candy, and the mother said, Don't eat candy, don't eat too much, don't even eat because it will clear your teeth. And the child moves at the back of the mother and eats plenty of candy. And then he has stomach ache. He still runs to the mother. The mother cannot say, because I told you, go away. No. The mother will, the, a good mother will say, come here. What have you learned from eating too much candy? candy. Because it has given him pain. So then he will learn. You see, he's not doing that because he wants to neglect the mother. But this is what his childhood behavior can afford at that time. So those things are bound to happen. And that's why they need the mother, the parents very close at all times. So when that mistake made, they help them to learn from it. But supposing a child that has no parents around, he gets the stomach pain, he will carry pain and move up and die, has nobody to console him or her. And then he will now die in his mistake instead of learning from it. So many of us make mis 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 mistake. Even ordinary cooking soup. There was a day I was cooking food. I was testing the food. It was not testing. I kept adding salt. It was not testing. I kept adding salt. You know, the salt was just taking time to, to go around. By the time I finished the food, my God, it was, it was full of uh, salt. And I was asking myself, am I the one who really cooked this food? <laughs> So, and sister, you have you not know, said what about cooking mistakenly? What about pouring sugar in place of salt? <laughs> uh -huh. So, wow. or you can wake up, plan to do something, and you are not able to accomplish it. You feel sad the whole day. You know, many people do not learn that mistake must occur for us to learn. That's why there's mm -hmm. a mistake. But if you're not learning from the mi mistake, that's where the problem is. That's why you repeat it again and again and again. But if you learn from it next time, you will think to where you will use your brain. Uh, well, there is this Yoruba uh, adage that says, um, anyone that falls into the pit teaches those behind a lesson. Must the mistake actually come from me for me to learn? Can't I learn from other people's mistakes? You see, some people don't learn. And when you are not self-aware, you don't learn. Like the goat, if the first goat in front falls into the pit, the rest will not. But the sheep, all of them will fall in there. So it depends on people's the per perception yes, of things and life. Hmm. But people who are always aware of themselves always take a, a breath, you know? Take a deep breath before they act or before they do something. <laughs> people who do things before they think will always have lots of mistakes. <laughs> Thank you very much, sister. You said love and nurture by parents is so vital. It's needed from every, every child should be given by parents, especially mothers. Why especially mothers? It takes two to have them and to balance the growth of any child. I think both parents are needed. Why specify on mothers? You're right. But you know that things have changed. You know, in the past, Mothers are always there for children. 
whenever you come home. You know, imagine you when you are grow, grow, growing up, you come back from school, your mother is not there. How do you feel? If the father is not there, you may not mind so much, isn't it? Yes. But the mother yeah. is there, look at everybody, even the husband himself, if the wife is not there, things are not okay. Life are not complete. Like the woman who was doing everything in the house, keeping the house, cooking, until one day he fell sick. And the husband has to enter the kitchen for the first time. He didn't know where things are. The children went hungry the whole day because they couldn't cook. He has to go outside and buy food. And it's not the same like the food their mother cooks. Yes. And the man went to the hospital and begged the wife, please get well, come back. The home is not the same. <laughs> the home is not the That's same. That's a selfish back. demand. That's a selfish demand that, okay, I need you to be okay so that you come and resume the duty. Is that not <laughs> a sister? Know. What's your take now? What's your take on men who basically feel that every work concerning taking care of the children, shopping and cooking is basically for women see yeah. is it not good for them also to have an idea of what the woman does and the woman also gets an idea of what a man does in a marriage exactly that's how family is supposed to live together man has to compliment because women are started complimenting by going to work so <laughs> men has to be part of the system in the family, take care of the children, take them out, bed them if there needs be, and sometimes enter the kitchen. Why not? You see, but a lot depends on the woman too. If the woman really has true love and care, he can even order the husband to do all those things he will do. But if you are all the time shouting at him, forcing him, you know, you should do this, you should do that. Men don't like that. So you need to understand how to handle your man so that, because some, some men cook in the kitchen. They tell their husband, my own dad was cooking. The day he will cook, he will take me to the market and we go and buy this, we come back. We are, we, two of us, we enter the kitchen. When we finish, he will leave the kitchen and say, give me food. <laughs> yeah. So I think a lot, there's a gift God gave women that we must not overlook. We are so gifted women that we can even turn this house into anything and it will go, if only we understand. Yes. The way you handle the man is the way the man will follow you. But, but sister, you don't you think, sorry for cutting you, but don't you think some men they can really cook they can do all these things but they're afraid that the woman will now you know make it their duty or feel exactly. that is you know abuse that privilege or even fear of their mother coming home or friends saying ah uh -uh, okay chiku has what has she giving you hey what are you doing packing your baby pounding yam you know i mean that's my my the way i think some of them feel it's not that they don't and cannot do it. Is, it. It, is, it is some of the women who just want to, you know, rub shoulder with men, which is not healthy. You can't rub shoulder with men. You are a woman, be proud that you are one. And allow the man to be proud as well. If there is true love and care. Unless that man doesn't know how to cook, one day he will also want to cook, cook something. But if you're making it a more that if you cook today, I cook tomorrow, you could already, I could already, that, that is competition and it's unhealthy. Mm. But mm. I know that some men, because of the way they were brought up also, will not like to enter the kitchen. But even if they don't enter the kitchen, there are other things they can do. Use your head, use your sense. While you're kicking, please take the children to school. Please take them, you know. It must not be around food all, all the time, you know. Rubbing shoulder. 
any wife who is rubbing shoulder with a man will never succeed because most men don't want to be you know publicly controlled by by women but i publicly did, okay privately yes but publicly yes. <laughs> but ideally they can control them by understanding them understanding yes yeah. you know yeah. if i really see my woman working very hard and tired and i know he's real why wouldn't the men help yeah. but it's when you start screaming you're not doing anything other men are doing a b c d every time you're you're comparing. Verbally abusing comparing then you're going nowhere i have told several people stop competing in marriage there should be no competition mm. you are helpmates not competitors or maybe mm. you, you have got a, a big job now you feel that okay i get more job than him he should enter the kitchen says who you know we need to know where to draw a line if i truly love somebody i don't force people to do what i know that i can do mm. But I will have a way of getting that person to see, okay, here I have a need. I need you to do A, B, C, D for me today. But not every day. When I do it now, next time you will enter the kitchen again. <laughs> you know? Thank you very much, sister. Let, let's, let's now move to parenting and then the children. What, what do you mean by growing in the dark? Can you throw more light on that? You said some children are actually growing in the dark. Eh? You, you, said, it, you said growing in the dark, that some children are growing in the dark. Can you shed more light on that so that we'll understand what it means to be growing in the dark and what does it mean to be growing in the dark? You see, some children believe that they don't have the rights of their own, especially African children. They believe that whatever that to, to be done must be said by the parents. Mm. You see, some families, when their mother is not there, nobody cooks until the mother comes back. And this what but people who are trained and they are enlightened know what to do even when the mother is not there. It's not there. <laughs> But these people will wait for the mother to come and say, go and wash plate. Yes, mom. You go and wash plate. Have you washed your clothes? Go and wash your clothes. Yes, mom. You, you will wash your clothes. Have you brought the clothes in? Oh, let me go and bring it, mom. You see, they have no They initiative. don't use their initiatives. Yeah. They have no initiative because the mother did not train them to get initiative. That Even the cooking, if the child is up to the age of cooking, she should be introduced into that. Not every time you're fighting with your husband or with your wife. But many children grow up in the dark because they don't know their rights and their freedom. So when they go outside, see other children taking initiative, they are surprised. Because at home, they're never allowed to make any decision. In short, if they make, they will be shut down. Mommy, can we cook rice right today? Shut up. Do you bring any money here? You see, <laughs> so the person know he shouldn't talk. But enlightened parents will say, ah, okay, let's see. They what are we going to go today? Yes, they dialogue. They ask their opinion. Some children never give their opinion in their home. Once they reach home, they shut their mouth. Mm -hmm. So when you see them in the classroom, you ask questions, they also shut their mouth. But they don't know what they will answer. Well, and they you, just answer, or, or sister, maybe they just answer. What is your name? My name is Agatha. You know, and whereas the person who asks the question wants to know who actually is Agatha. In other words, yes. they are penned people, like stereotype. I might be wrong. I'm just guessing. No, you're, you're right. Because they are so dependent. If you grow up children who are not depend, independent, you are destroying those children because they they, they, they can they never make future the of sister their home. can i can i just ask you where can parents how can parents especially mothers differentiate those who are inquisitive you know 
or you know children coming to them and they just scare them away feeling that they are making you know they need they are demanding attention how can a mother especially dictate that this child is wanting an attention and not really real attention that needs an attention you see, the problem is that many parents don't dialogue with their children. If you dialogue with your child, you will know when that child is genuinely needing attention, even when it is not genuine and he's showing it. There's a way you will use that to educate the child. For example, there was a funny story I put in the new book I am writing on power of the, the developmental psychology that a mother had 10 children and they always eat together in an African setup. So one day he put plenty of meat and one bone. He wanted to see how they will handle that case. Okay? So, and all of them were eyeing the bone. Nobody wanted the, the fresh meat. So, as they were eating and eating and eating and then one of them took the bone and ran. The rest ran after him. They were snatching the bone from each other, licking and the other licking, and they were laughing, making fun of it until there is a market square. Then they said, God, see where we are there because of one bone. You know, they started laughing. <laughs> and but by the time they reached the market, each of them has grabbed that bone and licked, another person picked and all that. And that was the fun of it. So when they were coming back now, the bone was empty. And it was big bone, they can't crack it. So they threw the bone away. And they were chatting, coming home. They said they know that their, their mom put that bone to see how we are going to handle that bone. And we have handled it well in a very fun way. You see, they are learning. They are learning to share. They, they are learning to be together. They, they are not calling their mother to come and solve their problem. They are sorting it themselves. Tomorrow, when there is a fight or anything in anywhere, you see them also struggling. Uh-huh. But supposing they started crying, fighting inside the house, beating each other, then the mom will come in now. But he created that in order for them to learn. To learn. Wow. Thank you very much, sister. Now let's look at kinds of mothers. You made mention of under mother, parents that under mother their children. You know, I mean, very, very rich. Mothers who are sick. Uh, nobody prays to be sick. When that happens, I mean, care should be given to this woman, you know. But my concern is a workaholic or career mothers. So, and you said everything has its own time. How can this time be created, especially in our modern society, whereby, especially mothers now, they work, goes to work in the morning and comes back late. And they and need depends, to work. Yes, and they need to work. And they are depending on caregivers and relatives so is it not possible to remove them out of under mother <laughs> <laughs> mothers that are the mother their children how can how can how can parents you see in, in this one of the biggest problem we have now is that many parents are doing too much work out there some move from one job to the other, to the other, to the other. Even taking care of themselves, they don't do. They make all that money, but they don't enjoy it. So, as I said, is what you make yourself is what you become. The way you understand life is what it becomes for you. If you see life as a mocking many money-making venture and place, your life will go that direction. So what do you enjoy in life? You don't even have time to enjoy it. The white people, they make the money, by the end of the year, they go on vacation, okay? They travel, they move, they sit together. Some of our people are beginning to get it now. But there are some parents who feel that once they don't do three, four jobs, they will never have enough. You can never have enough of money, no matter how you try and how you work. So is to be contented with what you have so that you include your life in your work. Include your children in your work. Make time. If the if work ends by five, go home. 
Don't go for another job again from six to seven. Because by the time you reach home, your children have longed for you, look for you, they, they couldn't for, for find, for find you. Then you, you are no longer a mother. You're under mothering them. Because you are not there. The same thing with, with, with parents, with fathers. Fathers should learn how to go home, sit with their children, listen to their story, play with them, and pray also with them. It's, it's, it's about the mindset of most parents who think that, you know, work is and money is all about life. We are precious in the eyes of the Lord, and your children should be your priority. If we create mm -hmm. time for children, that time we come. But when you don't create time, no matter how much money you get, you are under mothering your children. Wow. And it will affect them in the future. Because they don't know what love and care yes. looks like. Well, sister, you made mention of the one that, you know, may, you know, depends so much that even at 35 doesn't know who to marry or how to go about it and doesn't have his or her own mind when there is trouble in the home, always calls home and, you know, and feels it is his or her duty to take care of their mom. Sister, this is a very sensitive and deep topic. Oh. So how yes. can someone entering into a relationship know and identify certain traits, especially this type of traits, like mama's boy or papa's girl to avoid? Mm -hmm. Because this is already a big wound that, mm -hmm. just as you rightly said, that physical wound is easier to handle than psychological or inner wounds. How can people like this be identified? And how can they be helped? Or how can, after identify, you say, let me still go on, the relationship can work, or you back out. How can they be identified? Sister? One of the biggest problems we have as counselors and psychologists is that it's difficult to tell somebody, this is what I'm noticing in you. If you have a physical wound now, I see it and tell you, you will thank me and go to the hospital. But if I call and say, my friend, you're 40, you're not married, and I hear that people are coming for you to marry, what are you waiting for? You'll be angry with me. Unless somebody who really loves you, they begin to share with you, no, I would have married, but you know, but who will take care of my mother if I go? You see some families, others are married, and maybe they leave the last born. I say, don't mm -hmm. marry, take care of, of, of the mother. They are killing that son because his, his or her future aspiration is not fulfilled. The mothers should know that they should look for their, that kind of love in their husband and also learn to live independent, but not using their children as a makeup. Because that children, you're destroying the future. So, like, like, for example, a man whom the mother forced to become a priest. So he studied, did everything. So that the mother would feel great. I'm a, I'm, I'm a mother of a priest. I'm a this and that. And but this person was not happy being a priest. Actually, the day the mother died was the day he wedded in another church. He just left the priesthood. So he was living the life for the mother, which is which for is not the fair. mother, for the mother. And that is the wound we are talking In about. Fact, and that is and sister, that is connected to the area of high expectation, you know. And you give a very nice example. Jesus giving deep in the parable, giving different talents, five, some ten, some one. That we are all different, even if we were twin from the same mother or from the same. Uh, Boom. How can parents lower or balance their expectations in order not to make, in order to avoid this kind of uh, example you just gave? You know, psychology is the study of the human behavior. And the first psychologists on earth are the parents. They should learn how to understand the psychology of each child. There are some children, when you do something to them, they will laugh. Some will cry. 
people with take things differently understand how this child behave how this child behave and all that it will now help you to journey with this child instead of comparing him or her with uh, a b c d or with this person and this person that this child is a quiet person he doesn't like noise this one is a <laughs> noisy one if there's no noise he's not happy he's you know uh-huh this child likes mathematics he knows how to calculate he's very good at that this child knows how to sing you know all of us are given talent and no talent is bigger than the other but they are different so if i learn that in my family like some people who say i don't want education i want to be a business person is it your choice yes okay this person say, I want education. I don't want business. Then we have varieties. But we are in a family where the mother wants to have doctors and lawyers and, you know, and they don't have the gift. Why are you forcing them? When you force them, they might do it to please you, but they will not be happy doing it. You see some people, they are very antagonistic, even in the job they do. It's because of these wounds. And they have nobody to talk and share. You know, some people can resist their parents and say, No, mom, I will not do this. This is what I will do. And they will call the person a stubborn child. Instead of listening to that child, is that what you really want to do? Are you convinced? Help the person to make a decision. And even in that decision, he makes a mistake. Help the person to remake. That's part of life. Don't say, I told you, eh? See your mess. Because we are very good at pushing people away and condemning them. We need love. We need care. We need understanding. You see, a, a wife always telling you the bad things about the husband or the husband vice versa. It's not a good sign. We need to learn how to look at those things we call a failure. What can we learn from them? How do we move out of them? Then we are talking uh, this about positive psychology. Well, thank you very much, sister. You talk about way of healing or resolving these wounds, and you made mention of uh, <clears throat> learning to allow that inner child in us to look to the reality and uh, who to please as accept who we are before the change. But I want you to throw more light on self-talk. Are you talking to yourself is it by going to the mirror and can you just give an example of a self-talk one minute sister ah okay self-talk means creating time to look inward and see the voices coming out from you and when you listen to yourself at times you may not even believe that this is in you because you are not be paying attention let's let's take for instance somebody did something wrong to me somebody hurt me eh? the way i take it will depend on the way i will move forward if you did something whether i did deliberately or, or didn't know how to do it it all depends on me on how i handle it yeah let's take for instance you 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 break you break the best the best plate or the best mirror i love you break it unknowingly okay <laughs> so it depends now on me to take a breath that's okay even if i cry from morning to night this thing cannot come up okay this person did not do it intentionally so what do i do do I want to forgive her or do I want to say pay, pay me back? I'm the one making decision. You see, the person can be say sorry. I say, yes, I'm, I, I have heard your sorry, but I have no money to repay this. So you pay me back. I'm the one making decision. But if supposing, instead of looking inward and talking to myself, I start abusing the person. You're very stupid. Look at how careless you are. See, you they are, they, 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 you will pay me back. If I'm the one, I will not pay you. I will go away. But if I self-talk first 
I will still have the respect and dignity for that person. And I'll be only looking at the mistake that because I could, I could be the one any day. So why am I yeah. losing the yeah. So when we self-talk, we have a better behavior. We have respect for yourself and respect for the other person without condemning yeah. the person. Thank yeah. you very much, sister. One last question. Can you give us a biblical example of a wounded parent, you know, transferring it to his or her children? I think you made mention of Ida Jacob. Can I want the audience to hear it from you because it's so interesting. But you have two minutes for that, sister, please. Okay, let me bring you the story of Jacob and Esau in the Bible. Esau was loved by the by the father and jacob was loved by the mother which means each of them lacked the love of their other parents and and that because of that division they two never got well together you see so jacob because he lacked the love of the father when the mother told him to do what he did, he did it very fast because this is like fighting back. And of course, Esau was very sad because the mother never showed him that kind of love. And you see, it brought a lot of separation. That was division. Then Jacob also, because he has experienced it, did that to his children. He loved Rachel pick Joseph, the rest begin, be, 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 began to get angry, you see. And what is the result of the anger? He was sold. And he moved on and on and on. Yes. So, and because they are this ignorant, they don't know. They think that it's by, I love this child, I love the other one, I don't love her. No, every child deserves the same love and care. Every child. If the mother shouldn't pick all the children and say the man, they don't love you, go away, or vice versa. No. If you are a mother and your children don't love your husband, make them love, love him. Bring them, bring it to the children's awareness that they need this. Take time, bring it to your husband. Your children need you. Don't start screaming and shouting. It doesn't help anything. But when you are telling some women, they don't understand. They want that fight to show that they are the correct one, they are the right one. Whether husband and wife should not be looking for wrong and right. They should learn how to accommodate one another so that the children will learn. Because when you start that division, the children will grow up having the same division. And it goes on and on. So, and there are so many instances in the Bible. If you go, you, 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 you will see where some people are being neglected, others are being loved. Uh -huh. Yes, David, David and, his, uh, and his father, Jay, say, you know, the list is endless, sister, yes. because, uh, wow, 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 wow. Sister, we are Oliver Twist, we are going to call you again, but we are working out <laughs> of time and uh, we don't want to be queried. Thank you so much. For finding time to be with us parents you've heard it all not just parents and parents to be that please you have wounds heal yourself or else directly or indirectly you might be transferring it to your children and your children to their own children and uh, it goes on there is healing and sister has preferred the means to be healed go to a counselor and open up and follow his or her instructions, but I will add a Christian counselor so that you are not misled. Sister, thank you so much. Can I say I mean, one word before you finish? I want okay. to advise everybody who is listening to me, don't feel that anybody is your own enemy. Most of the time, we are our own enemy. Look inward and you find the answers that you are looking for outside. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister. Kindly lead us in a brief closing prayer. Okay. Um, 
I will just read a prayer from uh, Psalm 142, verse 4 to 5. And then, <clears throat> this is a prayer to lift up parents' wound to God. And um, say, Lord, know our heart. He knows what we desire. Only we need to look inward and see how God is transforming us each day. God is a nurturer, and he continues to nurture us when we are open and honest to ourselves. We ask the Lord to bless us, bless the listeners, and um, hoping that with this knowledge, we come closer to whom we are, and then move on from there. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much, sister. We are coming again next week. <laughs> I've already booked the appointment, and everybody is hearing you. So the answer is yes. Sister, say bye bye <laughs> to our listeners. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you, sister. God bless you too. God bless you too. Yeah.